welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome my name is Zoe but most people know me as ZA Reptiles and today we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of bearded dragons so I have Tansy with me today and we'll start with the pros and then we'll go to the cons so I have 10 of each so the first pro which might not be a pro for everyone but for some people it is is their lifespan so a lot of reptiles live for 20 plus years and they're a very long commitment. Bearded dragons have a much shorter lifespan than other reptiles and on average they'll live about 10 years. They can live a little bit less, they can also live a little bit more, some have lived 12 to 14 years, but 10 seems to be the average. So there's still a long term commitment but not quite as long as most other reptiles that live for like 20 plus years. The next pro is that they're docile. They're very easy to handle. They'll hang out with you. Tansy, she's still a young beardy. Young beardies are more likely to climb around and explore. Um, adult beardies, though, are much lazier and they'll just sit and hang out with you. Baby beardies, not so much. Another pro is that they get big without being super big. They don't need a huge enclosure. A 4x2x2 four by two by two is ideal, which for a lot of people is big. But up until they're an adult, a 40 gallon breeder works really good when they're babies. You can even use a 20 gallon. Um, so they're big. You know, you get the effect of having a pretty big lizard. They're like a pancake in your hand, but they don't get ginormous. So it's very manageable. Next is that they're so stinking cute. Like, look at that face. Look at that face. Look at that face and tell me you don't just want to snuggle her so hard. She's the cutest little thing. Hey, we're trying to talk about how cute you are. So originally, I had no interest in owning a bearded dragon. I didn't want one. I wasn't planning on getting one. And then the PetSmart near where I went to college contacted me last year asking if I would take this bearded dragon because they couldn't sell her they were adopting her out because she had a rough start to her life and when they sent me the picture of her that face it was a done deal at that moment I was like I need that bearded dragon that bearded dragon is the only bearded dragon I want because her face so cute so cute and I love Tansy so much. I don't want any more beater dragons, but I love Tansy so much. Another pro is that they're super easy to find. They're very commonly kept reptile. There's a lot of breeders out there, so it's not hard to find a bearded dragon. It's super, super easy. Another pro is that they have a lot of diet options. They are omnivores, so they eat meat and they eat plants. Um, so their diet does consist of salad and greens and veggies and fruit, but also things like insects. And there's a lot of different insects you can feed. You can feed doobie roaches, crickets, occasionally mealworms, superworms, hornworms, nutrigrobs, silkworms. There's so many different insects you can feed them, and there's lots of different vegetables you can feed them. There's different greens you can feed them, different fruits you can give them as treats. So there's a lot of different things you can feed them. So sometimes it's a lot of fun just to mix it up and see what kind of different things they like. Another pro is that they do come in morphs. Not a whole heck of a lot, but enough of a change in color to make them look pretty different. So there's quite a few options out there. Um, the white bearded dragons I absolutely love. I think they're gorgeous. If I didn't get Tansy, someday I probably would have gotten a white bearded dragon. But I think Tansy is pretty pretty as well. She's got a nice orange down her back. Um, I'm assuming she's just a normal bearded dragon because she came from PetSmart, but what do I know? Another pro is that, like I said earlier, they really don't do much. When they're young, they do. They run around. They're curious and everything. But when they're older, they just kind of sit around and bask and eat and poop. That's really it. So you can take them out and they'll just hang out with you because they really don't do much. You can just let them sit there and they'll just sit there. Another pro is that they are diurnal, which means they're awake during the day when you are. So you get to see your animal. You get to see your animal be active. Your animal's awake the same time as you. So it's not like most snakes where you only see them come out at night. They are awake and running around during the day. The last pro of bearded dragons is that they're hardy. You know, a lot of people say that they're good for beginners. I personally don't really agree, but that's a whole nother video topic. 
Um, and really any animal can be a beginner animal with enough research and preparation. Again, whole nother video. But they are pretty hardy. They hold up pretty well. They don't drop their tail. A lot of people get freaked out by reptiles that drop their tails. They don't drop their tails. You know, they can take a little bit of some care mistakes while you're learning. Um, not a whole heck of a lot, but they can take a little bit of that learning curve that goes with keeping reptiles. Okay, now on to the cons. And you may be wondering why I have her on a towel instead of just holding her. Um, con number one is their poop. The worst poop of any animal I have ever worked with out of any animal I've owned their poop is the worst and she actually just pooped in her enclosure while I was filming a video with Kronk and it smelled god awful and she did it right in her hammock so I have to clean her hammock now but bearded dragons they have really smelly poops their poops are just gross they walk through their poop and they smear it everywhere they get it on them it gets under their scales so you need to clean them you need to clean the enclosure their poop is so much work and it's so gross. And the poop is the main reason I will not have more than one bearded dragon at once because that's enough daily cleaning right there. So going off of that, con number two is the daily cleaning because they do poop every day and smear it everywhere. So you do pretty much have to clean their enclosure every single day. All right, the next con is their lighting. So this isn't a problem for most people, but it is a little tricky to understand. These guys do need UVB, and they do need quite a bit of UVB, so they need a high-quality UVB. Not typically ones you're going to go to the pet store and get. So, some to look out for are Mega Rays, um, Reptisuns, the Linear Reptisuns, um, Arcadia Linear UVB Tubes, stuff like that. And that is not cheap. Those really high-quality UVBs are expensive. They're not going to be like your little $20 coil UVBs, which you don't want to use at all. They do not provide the proper amount of UVB and they lose their effect very quickly. So you're going to spend a lot of money keeping up with their UVB requirements and getting them good quality UVB. Going after that, they do need high heat, so you're going to need more heat, you're going to need higher wattages, whatever you have to do to make sure that they are getting their required, whether that's buying more lights or buying um, higher wattages, whatever you need to do to get their temperatures up, sometimes that's a little tricky. Um, but yeah, so they do need really high heat, which can be costly with your electric, and it can just be kind of a pain in the butt to achieve. Another con is that they do kind of need a bigger enclosure. I know I said that wasn't really a con, but you know, a four by two by two enclosure is costly. Um, you can build it yourself or you can buy it from someone, but it's not something you're going to go to PetSmart and buy. Um, so that can be kind of a pain in the butt, is trying to get them a 4x2x2 by two by two enclosure. So another con, which kind of contradicts one of the pros, is that they do need bugs and salads. So you're not just buying one or the other, you have to buy both and keep both on hand. So it's a little more money than trying to feed an animal that only eats one or the other. Another con is that it's very common for bearded dragons to get metabolic bone disease. I think iguanas and bearded dragons are the ones I see it in the most because all it takes is a mess up in their diet with calcium, phosphorus, or D3 or not having a strong enough UVB to cause metabolic bone disease. And so it's a very common issue in bearded dragons. Another con is that babies eat a ton. So if you want to be a little more cost effective with how much food you're having to buy, I recommend adopting an adult or a juvenile because babies will just pound through the bugs like it's nothing. So that can be very costly. So another con is that these guys will naturally go into brumation on their own without you helping. A lot of breeders put their reptiles through a brumation period to kind of stimulate that breeding cycle Bearded dragons just kind of naturally do it on their own. Not all of them do. Tansy hasn't. Um, but there are some people that, you know, their bearded dragons go into brumation. And they don't see them for a couple weeks, couple months. Um, and they're basically just hibernating for a while. And, you know, that can suck. You're not going to see your animal for a while. You don't get to hang out with your animal for a while. Um, 
and it can be a little freaky. Your animal goes into brumation. Do you know if it's brumating or if it's sick and dying? So I'm not looking forward to the day that Tansy ever decides to brumate if she does. And the last con is that female bearded dragons, they will lay eggs with or without a male. Um, now again, this is another thing that not all of them do. There are some people that, you know, get lucky and their bearded dragon doesn't lay eggs. But for the most part, female bearded dragons, just like female iguanas, female leopard geckos, you know, they're forming those eggs. They're not fertile, but they still have to pass them. They still have to get them out of their body. So you do have to provide somewhere for your bearded dragon to lay eggs. And there's always the possibility that they will become egg bound because that is a very common problem for reptiles. So if they become egg bound, then you have to take them to the vet and then you're spending money on that. So that is another con, but only of the female bearded dragons. So those are all my bearded dragon pros and cons. Hopefully this kind of helps some of you that might be looking to get a bearded dragon, kind of think about both sides of things. If you have a bearded dragon, if you have more to add to the list, please leave them in the comments below. For those people that are looking to get a bearded dragon and looking for more information, that would be super helpful. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss more videos, you want to see more of my animals, and we'll see you in the next video.